According to Tribune Online Nigeria, in 1922, a native simply identified as Obole was on a hunting expedition. Continuing, he stumbled onto a cave. He rushed back to his village and told others of its location. Isarun, or Cave of Ashes, is located in an isolated area of southwest Nigeria in the state of Ondo. TributeOnline.com 2018, the annual celebration of Ogure Deity, is a festival celebrating the discovery of the biological ancestors of Isarun. Key point, Iwo Eluru is the archaeological site where the discovery was made. It is sometimes spelled Iho Eluru, which comes from the Yoruba Iho Eluru. In 1964, British archaeologist Thurston Shaw led an expedition to Iwo Eluru. Along with precious ancient African artifacts, two hominid skulls were found at the cave. Iwo Eluru Man Chris Stringer wrote his PhD dissertation on the two Iwo Eluru skulls in 1974. Indeed, Stringer loves to woo audiences with his tales of trekking across Europe and North Africa in the early 1970s on a low budget, measuring skulls of Neanderthals and archaic humans. As brain expert Emiliano Brunner explained in his 2014 paper, anthropology was one of the first fields applying such new tools. This relationship between skull and brain is certainly a major topic within the field of functional craniology. In 2011, Stringer and Katarina Harati released a paper on preliminary results of new morphometric studies of Iwo Eluru. Based on stratigraphy and radiocarbon analysis, they dated the skulls to 11,000 to 13,000 years ago. From the study, Iwo Eluru was characterized by a more elongated cranial vault and flattened frontal and parietal bones. Its brow ridge was also slightly more forward projecting than the average modern human shape. They conclude the transition to anatomical modernity in Africa was more complicated than previously thought, with late survival of archaic features and possibly deep population substructure in Africa during this time. New Scientist 2018, quote, it actually resembles early sapiens fossils. We suggest this could be an example of an African whose population had received this archaic aggression, Chris Stringer. In 2014, a visiting professor at Cornell University, Patrick Waddell, published a paper, Expanded Distance-Based Phylogenetic Analysis of Fossil Homo Skull Shape Evolution. From the study, Iwo Eluru skull, about 12,000 years, represents a new species of near-human. By quantitative phylogenetic analysis, the latter is seen to be an old 200 to 400,000 year old lineage that probably represents a novel African species, Homo Iwo Eluriensis. Coastal Southern States America, connection to Iwo Eluru? South Carolina Sea Isles near Beaufort is the home to the Gullah Geechee. Many of the tribal members have exceptionally unique facial morphology. The ancestors of the Gullah were specifically targeted by slave ship owners for their valuable agricultural skills. From North Carolina Rice Festival, enslaved Africans knowledgeable in rice farming were brought to South Carolina. Slave owners greatly preferred slaves from the Rice Coast, traditional rice growing regions of West Africa. There are many fascinating videos here on YouTube on the Gullah Geechee. The Strange Case of Albert Perry and the AOO Haplotype In 2012, a South Carolina man was discovered to have mysterious archaic hominid DNA. 
An African-American genealogist submitted a dozen samples of Y chromosome DNA for testing. One sample was from the deceased grandson of a famous South Carolina slave named Albert Perry. That sample came back undetermined. They assigned the sequence to a new haplotype, AOO. Arizona State University genetics professor Michael Hammer. Hammer's team traced the DNA sequence back to a small village in Cameroon, Embo. An on-site team was quickly set up in the village. The team took swab samples from 180 male villagers. 11 of the men tested positive as AOO. Two of the men showed striking archaic facial morphology, including sloping forehead, prognathism, and thick eyebrow ridges. In 2013, Dr. Hammer delivered a speech to CARTA at the University of California, San Diego, interbreeding with archaic humans in Africa. Hammer, quote, We discovered a very ancient and rare Y chromosome. Well, this particular lineage was discovered in an African-American man from South Carolina who submitted his DNA, was very unusual, did not fit on the tree, end quote. Hammer, quote, and when we dated it, we found that the most recent common ancestor was at over 300,000 years ago, end quote. Continuing, quote, interestingly, when we did extensive Y chromosome searches in the database, we were fortunate. In Africa, there were 11 that seemed to be related to this chromosome, end quote. Continuing, quote, it turns out all 11 come from this tiny region of Western Cameroon from a farming group called the Embo, end quote. Dr. Hammer delivered his remarks at UCSD in 2013. Four years later, a paper would be published that would vindicate his hypothesis. Jean-Jacques Hublon. Bienvenue à toutes les personnes qui les parlent français. Nous allons une vidéo comme celle-ci. Très bientôt. From Nature 2018, new fossils from Jebel Urhud, Morocco, and the Pan African origin of Homo sapiens. Study We identified a mosaic of features including facial, mandibular, and dental morphology that aligns the Jebel Urhud material with early or recent anatomically modern humans. Continuing, we find an age of 315,000 years. This evidence makes Jebel Urhud the oldest and richest African Middle Stone Age hominid site that documents early stage of Homo sapiens. In 2013, Professor Hammer estimated a recent common ancestor for Ewul Eluru at 300,000 years. Jean-Jacques Oblant dated Jebel Urhud to 315,000 years. A year later, tragedy struck the Hammer family. He left the search for human origins altogether. He has dedicated his life to research and finding a cure for rare forms of epilepsy. New paper from Stringer Harvati. In February 2024, Katerina Harvati, University of Tübingen, announced on X her new paper co-authored with Stringer on Ewol Eluru had been published. Comparative 3D Shape Analysis of the Ewol Eluru Mandible, Nigeria. Intro. Previous studies of the cranial remains have found them to retain some archaic-like features. Stringer, 1974, noted both modern human-like and archaic elements in his morphometric analysis of linear measurements. Study. Our analysis suggests affinities between the Ewo Eluru mandible and the North African sample from Talfara in both its overall shape and size. Talfara is a city south of Casablanca, where 34 hominid skeletons were discovered in the Grote 
Pigeon's Cave dated 15,000 years ago. Another paper had come out in 2014 by ASU Archaeology PhD candidate, now Professor Christopher Stojanowski, Iwo Eluru's place among late Pleistocene of North Africa. Among his findings, Iwo Eluru plotted closest to a cranium from Talfarat and was also similar to Jebel or Hood. Chris Stringer from his 2012 book, Lone Survivors, page 260, was the replacement of proceeding late archaic peoples not absolute. They were partly absorbed by the evolving moderns rather than completely dying out. That might explain the two Iwo Eluru cranium. And archaic early modern humans still surviving today in a tiny village in Cameroon. Thanks for watching. There's much more to come on this topic. We'll see you soon.